All right, welcome back to Decrypted Tech. Today we're going to continue our coverage of the ASUS Republic of Gamers Mac, uh, excuse me, Rampage 4 Gene. We're going to take a look at the AI Suite 2 that's in here. That's going to be all of their overclocking tools, all of their monitoring tools, all of the tools that are going to give you, going to let you kind of push the board and give it uh, the best performance you know that you can get out of it. So we're going to go ahead and start with the first tool, which is the CPU Level Up. Now we've run this one before and we got a decent overclock out of it as you can see. You can go all the way up to 4, uh, you know, just using the basic level up, you can go to 4.25 gigahertz on your, uh, on a 3960. That's not actually bad. You can see our overclock up there in the right hand corner. That's the uh, final overclock that was stable through all of our tests and through uh, over 24 hours without any issues. Now this actually opens up the Turbo V EVO that lets you do uh, manual mode overclocking as well. You can click on the start, it's going to automatically adjust everything you need. Here is your manual mode. It's going to give you all of your B clock frequencies, your voltages, all of that. You also have uh, your advanced mode, which gives you some additional frequency options. Uh, excuse me, not frequency options, but voltage options that'll let you adjust the voltages for specific items inside the system. That's going to allow you to push that extra overclocking headroom and get the most out of your CPU while at the same time making sure that you adjust the individual pieces and parts that you need to so you're not just pushing everything up to the same level. Of course, we have our CPU ratio. You see ours is 4.6 or 46. That gets us our 4.46 uh, gigahertz overclock on the on the processor. All six cores are overclocked to that. And then, of course, you have your CPU strap. We're using a 100 megahertz CPU strap here, but you can actually go all the way up to 250 megahertz on your CPU strap simply by sl making a slider right here. And that's going to allow your CPU strap is going to be part of your um, B clock. Uh, the frequency it's going to the different CPU strap support is going to allow you to have different thresholds inside the processor to allow you to extend the overclocking. When you start getting into 166 and 250, uh, that's when you're going to start looking at pushing into better cooling than what, even what we're using, which is our Epic 180. So we generally don't mess with these unless we push it up to maybe 125, and then that's where we leave it for our overclocking purposes here. We don't have some of that extreme cooling in-house yet, so we... Uh, we haven't pushed that far. All right, moving on. Another thing is your Digi Plus power controls. We've talked about these before. The Digi Plus power controls are nice in that they allow you to tune how the power is handled and how it's sent to the components. As you can see here, you have your uh, CPU load line calibration. This is going to allow you to get either the best per uh, best power savings or the best performance. And again, you can adjust this um, all the way up to extreme. Um, we had ours up on ultra high. You can also do your, uh, you know, VCCSA. Change those. Ours is set to extreme right now. CPU current cap uh, capability. We have ours at 180 percent. Your same thing with the VCCSA, which is going to be the uh, system agent that allows you, you know, talk to the to memory. Your fixed frequency. We left this at 500 kilohertz. Then of course you also have your CPU voltage frequency, which we set this as a fixed frequency to 800 kilohertz. We had both of these set to you know, took them off of auto and put them to manual in order to see just exactly how far we could push. Got a little bit further than what we've been able to hit on some of the other boards, but not as far as we would have liked. Of course, you have your power phase control. We have that set to extreme, and then our power duty control is also set to extreme. Moving on to the next tool, we have EPU. Right now, when we're overclocking, it's pretty much set to high performance, and the rest of it's not functional. If you were to set this up, you have your options of auto, max power savings, and then of course you can adjust your individual configurations. The EPU status is going to show you that it's controlling the different functions and features inside of your uh, system. Again, if we had this set up, it would it could show that it was running, you know, handling the power for the CPU, for the fans, for VGA, for memory, for chipset, uh, HDD. That's only going to apply if you have a mechanical hard disk drive. Uh, you know, once you move to flash storage, this power saving doesn't affect affect that as much because it's not drawing that much power to run that flash drive as opposed to powering up a motor on and off making sure all of the mechanical components inside your traditional magnetic media are operational. Alright, moving on we have Fan Expert. We've talked uh, about this before. Here we don't actually have the auto like you've seen in some of the other ones but you can take a look at what your fans are doing. We have your chassis fans. You can set them to standard. You can change the Fan Expert for both the CPU and the chassis fan directly here. Um, it works out well. You know, it's kind of nice to have this in Windows because you can adjust it automatically. We have ours set to disable because we have our all-in-one water cooling unit plugged into those, and we want to make sure that the maximum amount of power is going to the fan as well as to the pump. All right. 
Next is going to be your probe 2. Yes, I want to cancel current operation. We've talked about probe 2 before. This is going to give you your sensors that are going to monitor all of the feature, all of the things that are going on inside the board. You can see you have your voltage. You can set it up to alert if the voltage goes beyond a certain range, if the temperature goes beyond a certain range, the fan speed drops below a certain threshold, and you can have a pop-up window. You can have it showing Celsius or Fahrenheit, and you can also keep a log of the different alerts. You can see here we've had a couple of times where our temperature has gone above the threshold that we have set for it to log and also to pop up a window. Uh, that was in some of our stress testing that we did on the CPU, so not a big surprise there. And it's nice to have that feature, especially if you're working on something and you might not be paying attention to what the temperature is doing. It's nice to have it pop up. It can also be annoying as well if it pops up at the wrong time. All right, sensor recorder. This is something else we've talked about that we really like about the uh, AI suite of tools is that we can actually set up a recorder so that if we can't watch directly what's going on with the voltage, with the temperature, or anything like that, like let's say we want to play a game and see what effect that has on the CPU voltage. Perhaps it's a game that, you know, Bo said it's got additional AI and puts a, you know, requires a better CPU. We can see what, it's, what effect it's going to have on the system voltages as well as on the temperatures that are running through there. And we can record this over a period of time to see exactly what's going on with the CPU and also with the system temperature. It's going to show that the motherboard, the PCH and the CPU temperature are all going to be cataloged here. The PCH and motherboard um, are sometimes very close to each other. You know, sometimes they're not. So it's still nice to be able to do that and you can actually do a historical record and you can have your polling interval set all the way down to five seconds and your duration actually set all the way up to 24 hours. So we can leave this and let it run for 24 hours and see exactly what the temperature did throughout the day, you know, letting it run some automatic scripts, and then we can get an idea of what kind of temperatures you would expect over the course of a normal day running different workloads. So it really is a nice product, and it's a nice feature to have in here. Of course, we have our AI charger, which uh, SUSE has had for a little uh, a while. Plug in a USB device. This one uh, looks like it's geared more towards the iPad. You can use some other charging. It says uh, it's a unique fast charging software that supports the iPhone, iPod, and iPad. Um, you know, you do, you, we've run it with some other ones, so it is compatible, but ASUS doesn't come right out and say, hey, you can run this with your Android phone or with any phone. It was particularly, particularly designed to support the Apple devices, those mobile devices for that. They're supposed to give you about three times the charging speed. In our testing, we saw about double, and that was with an iPad 2. However, it's still nice to see that extra power in there to, to get it charged a little bit quicker. And to the best of our knowledge, there is absolutely no detrimental effect. USB 3.0 boost, we've talked about this before. You can actually set this to turbo, and it's going to actually improve the speed of this by changing the method of transfer through the USB 3.0 uh, bus. Normally it's set in serial, so all of the data is going to be in a series. It's going to run it you know, one bit at a time. When you set it to turbo mode, it's going to increase the number of bits that it's able to pass through there. And when you set it to UASP mode, it's actually going to pass a ton of data through that same port and allow you to truly get the benefit of USB 3.0. Right now, the only company that has anything like this is ASUS, and it's tied to their Renesas uh, USB controller that they have on the board. So you, when you tie that to that, that's what's going to allow you to get that extra speed. Um, they've also been able to extend the USB 3.0 boost to the Intel uh, USB 3.0 controller, so it's nice to see that those actually integrate with each other, and you're going to get a similar performance benefit although the ASUS chipset does appear to get a little bit faster performance not by much though, about 2-3% to 3 so it's not that big of a deal between the two but you can see it across the board um, between the two different USB 3.0 controllers alright so that covers our tools here and uh, we will also show you the performance differences uh, when you look at the uh, check out the review it's linked directly below this video we're going to take a look at the monitors. Of course, these will change the side monitors here. You have the instructions. You have your sensor. You can move back and forth between there. If we wanted to see the CPU frequency, we can pop that up. That's generally for this uh, side menu over here. You also have some update features. You have ASUS update, which if you're familiar with this, it can allow you to download directly from ASUS FTP servers, updated BIOSes, updated drivers, all of that just by running the ASUS update application and that will actually pop up inside this same suite of programs. So you're not launching different applications, they're all gonna pop up directly inside here. So you get the benefit of having a single window that's gonna allow you to run all of this. So you have your BIOS updates here. Um, of course you have my logo, which will allow you to change the logo when you boot up um, your board. It's gonna actually overwrite the traditional ASUS logo. It'll take a second for it to come up. And you change the BIOS boot logo of my motherboard. 
can do all that. You can download it, upload it, whatever. All right. Then next you have system information, which again is going to pull it up inside the same window here. You have the motherboard type, who makes it, the BIOS version, everything in the BIOS date. You have your CPU information, and of course you have the SPD information for your memory. For whatever reason, it's actually not pulling up our memory at this point. And we've run into that before. Uh, usually a reboot will fix that and it'll pull up the memory, but we've also seen it more and more when we tend to overclock and we push the memory beyond um, what its SPD is registered for. All right, looking at the settings, again, you can turn the tools on and off. You don't want the EPU to show up. Uh, you don't want USB 3.0 boost or whatever AI charger to show up in your menu. You click apply. When you open it back up, you'll see that those are gone. You go back to settings, turn them back on. It's nice to be able to put exactly what you want in here. You can also change the, uh, the way the bar works. You know, auto hide after so many seconds. So once you pop it up, if you want it to go away after 30 seconds, it's going to do that. Just gives you some extra flexibility over the controls here. So that covers the AI, um, AI Suite 2 that's on the ASUS uh, Rampage 4 gene. We're also going to have some coverage of the BIOS as well as of course, the usual performance numbers that we'll get once we've got, yeah, as we've gone through all of our tests here. And again, that's in the uh, review that's actually linked below.